In the preceding session, we have identified becoming client-centric as a core component of the strategy of a commercial bank that embarked on updating the business model. We said that behind this trend is the recognition that client relationships are the most useful ingredient for the business success of a financial institution, especially for those institutions with a local and regional focus. The specific proprietary knowledge about customers, thanks to those long-lasting relationships, is a major competitive advantage. It allows the institution to develop and apply well-adapted customer journeys and provide specific individualized products. My name is Christian Rummer and I am the CEO and founding partner of Kulana. We have developed a low-code based open banking, digital lending and asset management platform. Our banking platform is used by multiple financial institutions in low- and middle-income countries and by asset managers around the world. In our blog, we will share with you our experience and ideas about how to organize financial services, how to develop a successful business model for the next decades, how to manage risks, and how to implement all the ideas and concepts at the right speed and sequence. A lot has been written about customer centricity. If implemented well, you can experience a variety of benefits. We have listed some of them. For example, you can enhance your customer satisfaction. Prioritizing customers' needs and preferences lead to better tailored products and services, resulting in a higher customer satisfaction and loyalty. This comes at the same time with improved customer retention. A focus on customer relationships fosters loyalty and reduces churn. Ultimately, this leads to longer lasting and more profitable customer connections. You can achieve also higher cross-selling and upselling. As you understand the customer profiles, this enables your institution to offer relevant add-on products and services, boosting revenues through cross-selling and upselling. And if you do it well, you will experience also a much better customer engagement. Customer centricity encourages two-way communication, allowing your financial institution to better engage with customers, gather feedback, address concerns, and learn about the market in which they operate. This, of course, in turn leads to enhanced brand recognition. By delivering personalized and positive experiences, financial institutions can build a strong reputation for putting customers first. When you build your customer-centric model around the right set of analytics, you will also see better data-driven decision-making. Collecting and analyzing customer data leads to better informed decisions and the ability to anticipate market trends, as well as customer behaviors. Reduced risk is another benefit. An in-depth understanding of customers allows institutions to make more informed lending decisions, reducing the risk of defaults. And finally, it will allow you innovation. Direct customer interaction can spark innovative ideas for new products and services, helping institutions stay competitive in a rapidly evolving industry. Now, all this sounds very nice, but the valid question is still, what exactly are the products and services that make for a customer-centric business model? A customer-centric approach refers to a business strategy and philosophy where the primary focus is on understanding, anticipating and meeting the needs and preferences of customers in a personalized and effective manner. This approach involves putting the customer at the center of all decision-making processes and designing products and services and interactions that align with the expectations of goals. Key elements of a customer-centric approach in financial services include a number of items. The first one is understanding customer needs. As a financial institution, you need to deeply understand your customer's financial goals, preferences and pain points. This requires gathering comprehensive data, conducting surveys and engaging in direct conversations with customers to gain insights into their individual circumstances. What stage in life are these customers? And what are their short and medium term plans? Maybe you need to help them develop these plans. Secondly, you need to offer personalized solutions. 
Based on the insights gained, you should tailor the products and services to cater to the unique needs of each customer. This may involve offering customized financial plans, payment schedules, investment strategies, and insurance packages. Offering a seamless and convenient experience is another item. Customer-centric approach emphasizes providing a seamless and user-friendly experience across all touch points. This includes digital platforms, mobile apps, online accounts, and in-person interaction in a branch or an office. In the same way, you can watch a Netflix video on multiple devices and always continue from the last scene. The customer's interaction across various channels needs to offer the same convenience. Next, we talk about transparency. As a financial institution, you need to be transparent about your offerings, your fees, your terms, your conditions. The clear communication helps building trust and credibility with the customers. We list next the topic of education and empowerment, because educating customers about financial matters is a crucial aspect for a customer-centric approach. Providing resources, guides, expert advice helps customers to make informed decisions and feel more in control of their financial lives. This is true for customers at all levels. Your support needs to be responsive. Offering prompt and helpful customer support is essential. This can be through various channels such as phone, chat, email, or even in-person interaction. You need to have an active feedback loop in place where customers can provide feedback and suggestions. This helps financial institutions continuously improve their offerings and services based on customer input. Your goal is always long-term relationships. Instead of focusing solely on one-off transactions, a customer-centric approach aims to build long-term relationships with customers. This can lead to customer loyalty, referrals and repeat business. You need to have an active way of data utilization. Leveraging customer data ethically and responsible can help the financial institution anticipate customer needs and preferences, enabling them to offer proactive solutions and personalized recommendations. We also talk about adaptability. Markets and customers' needs are dynamic. A customer-centric financial institution must be adaptable and willing to evolve its offerings and strategies to stay relevant and effective. By adopting a customer-centric approach, you aim to create a mutually beneficial environment where customers' financials, well-being is prioritized, leading to an increased satisfaction, loyalty, and positive word of mouth, ultimately contributing to the institution's growth and success. Of course, a customer-centric approach is not simple. A lot can go wrong here. And we have listed several pitfalls that can have a negative impact on your activities. You should consider them when you're working on your implementation of the customer-centric approach. The first one is complexity. Adapting to individual customer needs can complicate operations and require changes to existing processes and systems. Data privacy and security concerns are another one. Collecting and using customer data requires a robust security measure to protect sensitive information from breaches. The whole approach is very resource intense. Developing and maintaining customer-centric approach demands investments in technology, training and personnel. Automation and analytical support are key. The whole customer-centricity approach is of course a balancing act. You need to strike the right balance between customer preferences, regulatory requirements and other challenges. Potentially this can lead to compliance issues. Sometimes we see also the trend for over-personalization. Over-reliance on personalization can backfire if customers feel their privacy is being invaded or if they are overwhelmed with irrelevant offers. Of course, one of the more difficult parts is inconsistent experiences. Achieving inconsistent customer experiences across all touch points can be difficult, leading to frustration and confusion. Finally, we always have the aspect of short-termism. Focusing too much on immediate customer needs might distract from long-term strategic goals. 
And finally, we have the resistance to change. Employees accustomed to traditional methods might resist adopting the customer-centric culture, and this will hinder the transition. So balancing the benefits and challenges requires a careful planning, continuous monitoring, and adaptive approach to ensure a successful implementation of customer-centric strategies. Overall, though, we see great benefits in a well-executed customer-centric business model. In the next section of the blog, we look at the second component of the business strategy that relates to measuring and managing risks.